Hi guys and welcome back to the fly tying with me, Telis Katsugianos, and today we're going bananas. I'm gonna tie a fly called the grey banana, which is like, just like any other salmon fly, it's a variation and my interpretation of the world famous banana fly. I've added a little bit of different colors to it uh, and it's proven to be very very good a lot of times. My personal best uh, was big spring fish in uh, Murrum caught in April is caught on this exact pattern. So of course for me it is a little bit special even though I'm pretty sure that the salmon that I caught that day was just a piece of pure luck. Uh, but we need to get lucky sometimes. But we are gonna go into detail as I will start tie, tie this fly. And uh, as usual, if you need any materials or if you're looking at, for anything specific, you will find it in the description to my website and the live events on Facebook. Uh, and if you have any questions, or uh, feel free to comment or to email me or whatever. I would love to hear from you guys if you have any questions or requests as well. Start by taking white 1.8 millimeter plastic tubing and I thread that, push that on to the needle a little bit like that. You can see I've cut this not completely straight. This will make it easier to put on the cone head later. Then you take the 3.0 millimeter and then slide that on. Make sure to see or feel where that is because you want to have enough space in here to put in the hook when you're fishing. This is cut also in the same way. It makes it easier to tie it on. So I'm attaching the thread here. This will squeeze the thicker tube onto the thin one. You can also, if you want to secure it a little bit more, you can add a drop of glue there. That will definitely make it stronger. Then I'm wrapping down to about here, which means I'm leaving this clean. Flat braid, and I'm using pearl for this one. You can also use different kinds of pearl tinsel. The benefit with braid is that it's a little bit stronger, but it's not as uh, shiny. So, pros and cons. I'm wrapping this. Just a few laps here. Like so. And I'm attaching that one. And cut that off. Next step is adding a little bit of golden dubbing here, golden yellow, signature dubbing. Very long strands in this one, so if you want to, you can cut it off, or cut it out like this. Then I'm, as usual, spinning this a little bit together, holding that over the tube, and then you start wrapping. And I'm ending just of the tip of that thick tube there. If you go too much forward or if you create too much distance between this uh, thick one and where you end the fly, it will be a little bit more uh, sensitive to breaking. All right, that's the body. I don't do anything else than that. And then next step is taking the second wing because we're gonna tie this reverse. So this is a piece of olive fox hair here. Like so. I'm cutting that. And I'm removing any access that I don't want. And then of course I need to measure this how long I want it. And then I'm cutting off the axis again. We're tying in this one reverse. That means that I'm putting this one uh, pointing forward like so just a few laps then I'm taking a little bit of gray fox hair and this one should be shorter than the olive one 
and move a little bit like so. Have a look, it's the final uh, tips of the wings goes about here, so the gray should stop somewhere in the middle. This couldn't be a good guideline. And then remove any excess. Putting that on top, adjusting it a little bit by pulling this end. You can adjust the length and cut off the axis here. If you leave a very big lump here, that will help the wing to stand more. It will be a little bit too much sometimes as well. Then I'm, as you can see, folding this one over and attaching it. Next step is adding a little bit of flash and I like to use the saltwater angel hair which has a little bit wider or broader strands. One is enough in my opinion for most situations. One lap with the thread, turn that one over and lock it with two. Remember that synthetic fibers like this should be uneven in length otherwise they get stuck together uh, in water so this will make it swim and move a little bit better then i'm taking my banana hackle soft hackle patch or rooster saddle they create a similar uh, look so i'm taking the feather here and i'm removing what i don't want by pulling a little bit like so then I'm just carefully pulling these fibers back the the amount that I want to use and then I cut here to get rid of the excess so now it's time to attach it we have cut that out and I'm attaching most of it on that hump there but make sure to lock it below you will get more uh, locking effect on this slim part here Take your scissor, the inside of it, not the cutting inside, the other edge here. Put that onto your stem there and just slowly pull. As you can see, you manipulated the fibers. This will make it way easier to hackle. And you can make that even more visual by pulling the fibers back. So first lap coming up here, take your finger and thumb, pull that back and pinch and reverse your grip because otherwise this will just get twinned and you're losing the effect of the work we just did. So now that ugly hump is covered and then just slowly go down tight and keep adding those laps close to each other. like so and then cut off the stem close now you can take your brush if you want to to comb down a little bit of those fibers something like that now it's time for the final wing and of course since we're tying a banana variation it's time to use the banana colored hair in this case, it's still fox hair that I'm using for all three wings. Cut that off. Look over the taper of the wing, how it looks. Try to find a natural form. And you want that drip form of the wing. And then you measure it a little bit and then just adjust by cutting here. Once again, Tying it in reversed, close there, pinch it. First laps are a little bit looser and then you tighten it. If you have too tight in the beginning, you will just push the hair uh, away from you. Then fold this over, make sure it covers nicely, like so. And just three your laps should do it for now. Once again the brush, I'm combing through to see how everything is shaped, if I'm satisfied with how the taper looks. 
these kind of a little bit more Scandinavian style of tubes uh, tend to be a little bit more bulky than a monkey style or a sunray or anything like that. Of course you can adjust how much materials and uh, how you want the dress dressing of the fly to be. But it's easier to make the flies bulkier by using these kind of methods. So the fly is technically done. What I'm going to do now is I'm just going to attach the cheeks. And I'm pulling away uh, the things I don't want to use, like so. The hackle length should be about a third of the total wing length, as you can see now. One, two, then the last little part here. Same with the cheeks. They should not uh, exceed uh, a third of the wing. In my personal opinion, at least, for good-looking proportions in a fly. This is up to anyone to decide. Uh, but you can see that by uh, most salmon fly tires, they have the same kind of proportions uh, in the flies. Okay, this is a good thing to have a rotational ice when you're doing these kind of things. Otherwise, it's it's a little bit luxury. It's not a necessity. You only need so something to hold that needle or hook. All right, take your Loctite glue. Just a few drops. Like so, and cut it off and cut that stem off there as well. That one was already off since I pulled it off. Uh, now it's time to put on the cone head. I normally do that uh, free based or holding the fly in my hand. I find it a little bit easier. So I'm taking a gold cone head here and just sliding that on. Not all the way because now I have to just add a little drip of glue there to secure it. Then you squeeze it on. I normally pinch, pinch it, the tube in the scissor here and then pull a little bit extra. So you get that all the way in. Like so. Then you're cutting off. So you're leaving roughly one, one and a half millimeters. Then you take your lighter and you burn that, creating an edge that will make sure that the cone doesn't slip off. The glue of course will help, but uh, you can always, you should always burn there as well. All right, there we go. There's the gray banana, uh, which for me has a personal big value of course, since I caught my personal best spring fish on this fly. Works very nice in brighter, bright weather cl or clear waters, sunshine, it's a very, very nice fly for those conditions.